Hey folks, welcome to The Daily Dude. Today let's take a look at some random facts from Lumna Acres and then I will get into my 10 reasons why I want to homestead, which was started by Rose and Ryan over at Wholesome Roots. Have a look at Lumna Acres channel and their 30 random facts video in the links below. When I was 20, me and my dog Molly loaded up my truck and we moved to northern Vermont. My favorite color is blue. I can be a perfectionist. All the pine in the house is seconds from a local mill about 20 minutes down the street. Today's video is brought to you by the fine folks from Wholesome Roots in Georgia. Okay, kidding around. But seriously, go check out their 10 Reasons Why I Homestead Challenge video. It's awesome. Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I would like to share with you 10 reasons why I homestead. I'm also going to make this a challenge to other homesteaders. So if you have a YouTube channel or a Facebook page, please join us along and participate. Apparently I'm jumping on the 10 reasons why I homestead bandwagon today because there are a bunch of them that came out and some really good ones. So. The playlist of, uh, from Wholesome Roots is down below, the link to that playlist, and there are a bunch of great videos in there, and I would encourage you to go learn more about why homesteaders do what they do. And uh, so today, my random fact number 29 is going to double as my 10 reasons why I want to homestead. I don't, I'm not homesteading yet, um, yeah, you can use whatever definition of homesteading you want, but I don't consider myself homesteader yet. But uh, there, I've got 10 reasons why I want to do it, and I think there are a lot of you out there that might be in a similar boat as me. You don't, you're not where you're, where you want to be yet. And so uh, my challenge is to anybody else out there like me that wants to homestead, uh, to go ahead and make a 10 reason video on why you want to homestead. So let's get to my first reason why I want to homestead. Number one is, and probably, I hadn't really thought about the order, but probably the most important is survival. And I know there's many ways to look at survival. I don't consider myself a survivalist. I'm I'm considering survival, you know, the day-to-day -day roof over your head, food to eat, water to drink, basic day-to-day -day survival. So that would be my number one reason for wanting to homestead is to have control over that. And that is, you know, well, it stems from, uh, you don't know what's going to happen in life. You just don't. Even... Uh, you know, I'm not talking about a zombie apocalypse because, you know, in that case I'm going to be a zombie and I'm sorry if I eat you. Uh, I'm not I'm not talking about that kind of survivalism. I'm just talking about day-to-day -day living in the world we're in right now. Uh, you can't always rely on government. Uh, you can't always rely on family and friends. And, you know, that's just that's a reality that things can happen and and uh, the places that you've relied on in the past might not be there in the future so having control over your own day-to-day -day survival that's my number one reason my number two reason is kind of similar but prepping and I don't consider myself a prepper uh, but I would like to have you know food storage I would like to have uh, you know, chickens that can reproduce and, and uh, ducks and what, rabbits and, and whatever else that I can I'm, and be able to can and, and preserve. So I would like to, that's one of the reasons why I want to homestead is I would like to be, be prepared, be better prepared. Um, I was in Boy Scouts, that's their motto, be prepared. So that's the number two reason is I'd like to be prepared. Number three is uh, and this isn't true for everybody, this is my reason, but cost of living. I would like to reduce and minimize my cost of living. And 
So cheap land with cheap property taxes is a that is a goal of mine. Um, and other than that, uh, an electric bill, I, you know, hopefully minimize the electric bill. But uh, and then I'd like to provide a lot of my own food. When you when you look at the major costs of living, it's uh, you know food shelter and <coughs> and that stuff. Water, uh, rain catchment, or a well on the property, or uh, you know, you can even temporarily do the whole uh, bring it in part. But uh, cost of living, I think, by homesteading, I can minimize my cost of living so that going forward, I've got better chances of survival and prepping. <laughs> um, and for some people, you know, the cost of living is going to go up when you're homesteading, and. You know, I, I get that, but that's that's not my, my goal for the homesteading is I want to use it as a reduction to the cost of living. No rent, no debt, uh, just the basics. And you can get by you can get by relatively cheaply without having all of the conventional doohickeys and this and that and and outdoing your neighbor. So uh, that's the minimalist in me is cost of living. Number four is to eat healthier, and that's, I, I try, I just can't buy organic, there's no way I can know where my food is coming from right now, I'm just, you know, grinning, bearing it until, until that day that I can and, uh, produce something for myself, but, uh, yeah, just eating healthier is, that's, really good reason for me. Um, number five and the next one I'm going to clump together but uh, just the opportunities that having a homestead would create. And here I want to pause for a Justin Rhodes video from a couple days ago. And this was this was an inspiring video for me and I hope you will uh, take a look at this at, at this video and the relationship uh, that has formed on this farm and I don't want to give it away so let's just go watch the video. One of the coolest things about this property and about this situation, like I said earlier on in the movie, many of you guys are looking for land but he's found a way to have it without the money and she's, she's got land but she's found a way to have help on the land and companionship and social life. It's really a great situation here. You've, got, you've, you've gone looking for land found a listing on Craigslist, you had listed on Craigslist that, hey, I'll do a trade. You could come and work this land and you can stay here, but you'll give something. Do you mind tell us briefly what the arrangement was? And you can learn more about all that. His ideal homestead without owning the land at Justin Rhodes. That video struck a chord with me because it reminded me of the opportunities that you have when you have land or a homestead or a property of some type. And that was just a real uplifting little story there. So my, my reasons number five, six, seven, and eight, the next four reasons why I want the homestead are because of the opportunities it creates. Uh, number five would be opportunities for income. If you've got land, there are ways there are ways to make some money, and I'm not talking about a hundred grand a year or even fifty grand a year. You know, I'm talking <laughs> five grand a year would be a would be a big improvement. And if you reduce your cost of living down far enough, some people can be comfortable on five grand a year. But and it's it there are so many different money making opportunities. Uh, chickens, ducks cut flowers and I, I could go through a hundred unique ways that people are making a little bit here and there and you know piecing it together not you know not trying to get rich off of it I I have accepted a life of poverty instead of fretting about oh I'm always going to be poor I embrace it I am always going to be poor okay life sucks now what do I do uh, 
uh, thank you Southern Yankee Homestead on channel I came across and I need to catch up on them but um, so yeah reason number five are the opportunities for income and uh, you know just thinking outside the conventional box on that and I'm for me it's little pieces of income here and there uh, so number six would be uh, the opportunity to pay back those who have helped me along the way and that was something uh, Mike and Jenny from the Pratt Family Homestead said in their teaser, their ten reasons why they homestead and that's helping out others and giving stuff away and for me I would like to one of the things would be in some way to just have more of an ability to pay back or just say thank you to those who have helped me out along the way. So that's number six. Number seven would be uh, the opportunity to help others, like Mike and Jenny at Pratt Family Homestead. And that, you have to go watch their video. I just, that was their reason number nine towards the end, but go watch the whole thing. And just the opportunity to help others. And that's what comes to mind is that Justin Rhodes uh, video. Here you have a, a woman who is not as able and a young couple who are able and they have worked out a, a relationship and uh, that helps each other and that's something that I really would like to explore if I've got land or property or whatever is the ability to help others and that would be something I would encourage a lot of you to look more into also uh, there are unique opportunities that you can create and I just uh, I would encourage us to expand our uh, community as it were by by looking if you've got land and and uh, don't have the ability or the time or the whatever but hey maybe there's an opportunity a mutual opportunity there for some somebody else so that's uh, helping others would be um, number seven number eight would be the opportunity of meeting more like-minded people and uh, joining a community or becoming part of a community and uh, you know maybe creating my own family surrounding myself with with people that I enjoy surrounding myself with having land and, and that's not uh, that's why I have looked into communes I can't do this stuff by myself I can't do everything I want to do by by myself the the idea of self-sufficiency for me is you know I'm just I'm never gonna get there I'm always gonna have to rely on other people for for something and I you know that's my personal belief on the whole self-sufficiency thing for an individual you just can't do it it takes a village and you know I have in land I that's why I looked into communes and how those work and whether or not they're successful and and are there successful ones and what are they doing that's different and it's just there's no one answer on that one it just has to you have to try and fail like Jason from Cog Hill Farm and Homestead in yesterday's video uh, you fail and you fail and you fail and you fail and uh, but it'll it'll come out right if you keep it keep at it and that was and here I will also mention the uh, Cog Hill Farm and Homestead his inspiration and find inspiration wherever you can but his inspiration for creating the YouTube channel was seeing that Casey Nysat video um, just given the the basics on story and you don't have to you don't have to be a million dollar movie producer and go to film school and and uh, th so that was a very encouraging video and I can see why it would be an inspiration so that that was cool to hear from Jason at Cog Hill Farm and Homestead that his inspiration for the YouTube was to uh, was that Casey Neistat video and my inspiration for wanting to homestead is coming from all of all of the great YouTube channels out there people finding unique ways of doing things and and just taking more responsibility for themselves and their families and that's what it comes down to me uh, is taking 
more responsibility for myself and and those around me. Uh, and I've gotten off subject, but the yeah the the opportunity to find like-minded people. The number nine reason why I want to homestead and number ten kind of go together. And I want to before I get into those. This next video is a TED Talk. It was also recommended by Jason at Coghill Farm and Homestead. And I'm so uh, appreciative that he suggested this video because I just, I got a lot out of it. And the link is going to be below for you to take a look at it also. But it's a, it's a TED Talk of a chef, Dan Barber, and he's talking about foie gras, which is a controversial, delicious uh, food served at restaurants. And Dan Barber found a farmer in Spain that's raising geese and uh, doing foie gras differently than everybody else. And it's just, it's a really great TED Talk. So let's pause here for that. I said that. I said, isn't that what they're put on this earth for? Fly south in the winter and north when it gets warm? I said, no, no, no. Their DNA is to find the conditions that are conducive to life, to happiness. They find it here. They don't need anything more. They stop, they mate with his domesticated geese, and his flock continues. We need now to adopt a new conception of agriculture, really new. One in which we stop treating the planet as if it were some kind of like business and liquidation and stop degrading resources under the guise of cheap food. We can start by looking to farmers like Eduardo, farmers that rely on nature for solutions, for answers, rather than imposing solutions on nature. Dan Barber, a surprising parable of foie gras by Ted. There are some wonderful anecdotes and stories uh, that Dan Barber shares of his time with Eduardo. Oh, I forgot the last name. It's it's down below, Eduardo. But it's ju just a fantastic video, and it leads me to my reason number nine why I went to Homestead. And this is something that uh, Scratch Made Homestead just talked about in their Ten Reasons video, and that is... Reason number nine is that it gives me the opportunity to protect the land that I have control over and to hopefully improve the land. And, you know, as far as leaving a legacy, I think uh, that's pretty important to me. I'm not going to, I don't want to leave it for my kids or grandkids or anything like that. That's, that's not what I'm interested in. I, but if I can protect it, at the very least, or and hopefully improve that land for the future, then I think that's a, that's a good legacy that I would like to leave behind. And reason number 10 is uh, I want to be the change I wish to see in the world. That's a Mahatma Gandhi quote, be the change you wish to see in the world, or something along those lines. And there's some questions as to what he actually meant when he said that. But that's what it means to me. And when I got into politics, that was a quote that was a, a driving force behind me. Uh, you know, at the time, I wanted to see an end to wars. I wanted to see uh, an end to uh, government-imposed poverty. I wanted to see an end to us giving up our civil liberties. And, uh, you know, that was the that was the change I wanted to see in the world and so I went out and tried to do that change and uh, you can't control anybody else and you shouldn't want to control uh, well you should want to control but you need to recognize you can't control anybody else we can write all the laws we want to and say do this and do that and we just you can only control yourself so that's that's what I try to do. I try to control myself. I'm not going to start any wars. I'm not going to tax anybody. Uh, I'm not going to take anybody's land or rights away. Um, and now that has spread over for me into, into the homesteading realm. And what is the change that I want to see in the world? I want to see people eating healthier. I want to see uh, 
so I want to eat healthier myself. I want to see people stop drinking the high fructose corn syrup soda and eating at fast food restaurants. And that's something I've completely wiped out of my, uh, of my life. And I, I'd like to see people raising animals for food in a more uh, natural way. I'd like to see people treating the earth more naturally. And I'd like to see people helping others and, you know, not just providing for themselves, but uh, hopefully providing a bounty that can be shared. And you can do that with homesteading. And so I just, I want to be the change I wish to see in the world. And I, I, it might not make a difference. I might not do any of it all, but um, you still got to try. You really still got to try. So those are my 10 reasons why I want to homestead. And we'll see if I get there or accomplish any of them. It, you know, you got to dream big and then take a bite at a time. Thank you to Rose and Ryan at Wholesome Roots for starting this wonderful collaboration. Check out the playlist of all those great videos below and also check out 30 random facts from Lumna Acres who Justin Rhodes just visited and check out the Justin Rhodes video with the interview of how uh, uh, they were able to have a meeting of the minds and come out with something mutual, mutually beneficial for both of them. Uh, check out yesterday's video with Coghill Farm and Homestead that was an inspirational video and that's it. Everybody have a great day. See you tomorrow for my last random fact. And always use a wind filter.